Hey everybody, welcome to part two on my top eight techniques I use for learning in school, especially for kids who have ADHD. These are things I've implemented for myself because I struggle with ADHD and dyslexia and also things I've implemented with patients and other people that really this can be beneficial. If you are new here and want peak performance in improving on your mind, helping with ADHD, anxiety, depression, and want to know those tips and tricks, I talk about it all on this channel. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, if you like this video, go ahead and give us a like, as well as hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos that we talk about on this channel. So without further ado, let's go to the next five techniques that you can use for kids with ADHD to help them succeed in school. Here we go. The fourth strategy is for people who are more interpersonal, who are more social, interactive. Uh, this could, it varies with people with ADHD. Some people with ADHD tend to be more shy or very sociable and very active and like to talk to people. So how do you can actually use this to apply to be successful in school when you actually have a discussion with somebody else about that topic and teaching it to that person? or sharing notes with each other. So you actually can learn from somebody else, like, okay, maybe I thought about this. I use this a lot in medical school. I wish I applied it way earlier on, but it really helped me significant to perform really well in medical school is by actually doing it with other people, by teaching the subject to somebody else or saying it to somebody else and comparing notes and having somebody else teach it to me. So that way you actually really grasp the concept in case you missed the idea about the subject in the first place, this can be really, really powerful. The fifth technique that I would say is if you are more of a physical hands-on type of learner. And what you can do, and I've used this a little bit because I am, tend to be more hands-on, is acting out or doing a role of what you're trying to learn. So you can use this for history, for example, if you want to go back to the example of Henry, King Henry VIII, trying to act out all those situations with the you know six wives, what they did. You actually, you, you know, parents, you can actually really help this with your kids getting costumes out. I know it's a lot of work, but trust me, it will really stick in their brain if they're really struggling with a certain subject or it might be math. You can actually act out certain, you know, things. You get really creative with this type of stuff of using actual physical activity to be able to actually remember things. The other thing you can actually do with also physical learners is using flashcards, but not just making a list of flashcards. So for example, would maybe be learning a certain subject as far as a different language. And what you do instead of just like, okay, I want to memorize all hundred of these words. You use, you put them in actually categories, whether, you know, nouns, verbs, subjects, stuff like that, that actually maybe relate a little bit more and you put them in groups. So it doesn't seem so tasking of trying to memorize a hundred of them. It's more like, okay, I need to memorize 20 of these and 20 of these are verbs and 30 of these are nouns. And then even going further, but maybe having some relationship within even those nouns, there might be, a, they might have the same ending or something, something that could actually strongly connect those categories. This helped me significantly in medical school, especially memorizing different medications and different herbs and interactions and trying to relate because we had to memorize thousands of different drugs and herbs and stuff like that, that just made it difficult. But by putting them in categories, when I would do this, this helped me significantly of uh, remembering them by putting them in categories. Plus, you know, going and walking, you know, with kids who are going, walking about, that's the best thing is because that's physical activity is too. Doing it and you're physically flipping the cards. This is really powerful for people who are more physical, kinesthetic types of learners. The sixth technique is if you are somebody who really likes music, you tend to be somebody that might learn best because you play an instrument and you tend to be very talented in music. And this is where I would say trying to make a jingle or a song out of something to try to memorize something or a difficult concept. These are applied all the time. Sometimes they already have been made. You can actually look them up online. This is something you definitely implement. One thing that I know I did for certain for me is that I would play music in the background, more classical music. They have found that, you know, especially for kids with ADHD who get distracted very easily, I got distracted all the time. You know, a dog barking, uh, my siblings maybe fighting downstairs or the wind blowing, whatever it might be. My mind would then wander and think about the wind, think about outside. I mean, it was terrible. It'd be so hard to just focus but using classical music or, you know, music that doesn't have lyrics, because if you use lyrics, that will be too distracting. But something the music that doesn't have lyrics can help drown out all the sound so you can actually focus on what you're studying, what you need to be doing. 
The seventh tip is after you've applied all of these things that you're implementing, whichever works best for you, is actually test yourself. So for the visual part, you know, I would redraw my mind maps before a test so that I got it, I solidified it, you know, testing yourself, you know, quizzing yourself with your flashcards or singing that song that you wrote that it kind of just testing yourself. It's always important to do before you're actually going to take the test. Because if you don't test yourself, uh, you're going you're gonna to have a hard time actually succeeding in the exam or succeeding in school if you actually don't challenge yourself. The eighth and final step that I would say that really is important is get good sleep. Your body needs it because the brain needs to you know, process everything that you're learning to get a good night's sleep. And even every night you should be getting good night's sleep throughout the school year and throughout well, the year, not just, you know, school year, but also summertime. You also need to really kind of implement good eating habits, getting good nutrition. The brain needs good nutrition, good minerals. Uh, a lot of people I feel like don't get, especially a lot of kids don't get enough, you know, proteins and minerals in their diet. They need to incorporate more of that so that your brain can be at its most peak performance, also getting good healthy fats. So now that you've learned all these different strategies to implement and studying and learning, there now becomes the exam day or test that you have to take that can sometimes you learn all this stuff and then your brain just goes blank Pfft, what did I just learn oh my goodness uh you know you freak out so I'm going to talk about my top strategies as far as helping reduce anxiety perform better in tests especially for kids with ADHD or deal people would deal with anxiety or depression so make sure to not miss out on that video and if you have not already hit that subscribe button so you can actually get to that video and not miss out. And if you haven't watched our other videos, uh, especially part one, go ahead and check out part one on the strategies of learning techniques and this video over here of why kids with ADHD struggle in school. So until next time, this is Dr. Legrand signing out. Thanks. Bye.